Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by WordPress. Make WordPress.com your online home. Plans start at just $4 a month. Go to WordPress.com slash know how to get 15% off your brand new website today. Today on Know How, I'm putting Android in my iOS. But you got iOS in my Android. It's a Switch episode of KH. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and do some strange kind of fighting moves. I'm not exactly sure what that was, but I am Father Robert Ballas here. I am Megan Maroney. And I'm Jason Howell. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. We're all together again. Now, the last time we did an episode like this, it was for the uh, Equa Fix It. You mm -hmm. remember that when uh, yes. they decided that it would be really cool if everyone had all our private information? And we gave yeah. you some really good tips and tools for securing your personally identifying information. Today... I think is something that, um, well, it strikes near and dear to the hearts of our Twit Army. You, Megan, of course, you are an iOS person. You mm -hmm. appreciate their ecosystem. You, of course, are an Android person. But you've been doing an experiment the last couple of weeks. What exactly was that? Yeah, and how long were we doing this experiment, <laughs> Megan? I think I said we would do it for four weeks. No, I'm pretty sure you said six. <laughs> we're gonna have to go four. to the tape on that. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna have to roll the tape. <laughs> I was you can't you couldn't see me, but I was winking because I can't really wink. You must have thought there was something in my eye, but I was winking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I said six weeks, but I'm tired of it. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 don't okay. we, 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 we gotta let that out slowly. Don't okay. admit. Don't admit. <laughs> okay. okay, you know you're yeah, good don't with this. Spoil the okay. ending. <laughs> All right. Now, so, yes. This, but this is the second time you've done this. Yeah. Last year we did a four week switch. Uh, me going from Android to iOS, and that was the first time that I had done that. So it was very educational. I'm finally spending some time with iOS, and then Megan, of course, going from iOS to Android, which you had been on Android in years past, mm -hmm. but you hadn't in a while and and let's face it with the pixel devices you know android has kind of at least matured to a certain level as far as google is concerned it wasn't the android of my youth let's yeah. just no. Say. yes no no <laughs> thankfully no. but see I, I think that's why i love the fact that you do this once a year because we are at that point where android hardware is really good ios hardware is really good both operating systems have their pros and their cons and you know we tell people it's just a tool and you use the tool that works for you but is that actually true? And I think that's what your experiment shows people. It's like, no, I can do everything I need to do Absolutely. in the other operating system. It's just, you know, you kind of have to learn this doesn't exist, but this does. And you can't do that, but you can do this. Right. That's what we want to bring to Arquitas. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, I think that what we learned last time and what I'm realizing this time as well is that they, you know, they both do the same things. Everything, 99% of what you probably want to use right. a smartphone for, you can do on either platform. It takes a little bit of adjustment, but there's an ecosystem tie-in aspect that becomes a little limiting. So if you've already secured yourself on one platform, it's not always quite so easy to move to the other one. It might be, as we're going to show today, it might be easy to bring your data over and, and, you know, that whole process. But there's, you know, a whole lot of hardware out there that only supports one platform and not the other. You might have, a, you know, a closet full of that hardware that suddenly becomes junk if you right. if you decide you're, you're going the other direction. And that might be a deciding factor to not go the other direction. Now, you know, us Android and Windows folks, Megan, we, you know, we love to say, oh, you're trapped in the Apple ecosystem. But to be fair, I mean, from your point of view, that there is an ecosystem for Windows and there's an ecosystem for Android just as much as there's an ecosystem for Apple, right? I mean, it's it's not one-to-one. -one. You can't come straight over. Oh, I think Apple works pretty hard to keep people in their ecosystem mm -hmm. and they do it, um, you know, without thinking. Whereas I think Windows, especially their apps, you know, the, the Outlook the, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is my favorite iOS email app and it's also available on Android. I think Apple is the only one that just says, you know what, we're going to sell this HomePod. We're going to sell this $369 device 
and you can only use it with an iOS device. Like, you know, just wah, too bad wah. for the rest of you. Yeah. Um, and th nobody, I mean, Android doesn't do that. They, they don't well, do they that. Well, they can't. They can't really get away with it. Right. I mean, can you imagine they build a brand new device and they say this will only ever work on Android? I mean, you could, but you're really limiting the the productivity of that particular device slash app slash service. Are you? Because, I mean, aren't there more users on Android than there iOS? There are, but we, and we know this, and we, we've all covered this, the profitability is still on the iOS side. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're building for money, you build for iOS in yeah. addition to the other ones. Yeah, and like with, with wearable devices is, is the, yeah. the great example. I'm wearing the uh, the Apple Watch and I've, I've used a lot of Android Wear uh, devices in the past. Yeah, I would absolutely say that the Apple Watch is probably the best of the smart watches that I've used, but I have no, I have no choice in that matter. <laughs> Apple has basically said, this is an iOS accessory. And if you actually want this, you got to come over to our side. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you could speak to the other <laughs> side of this, which is that Android Wear is yeah. totally cross-platform. But are you going to want it if you're on iOS? Right. No. But that's, that's not necessarily bad, right, Megan? I mean, because, yeah, there is it's nice the Apple the option. Watch. But there is the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. And you know what you're going to get. And you know yeah. exactly how it works. And there are no compatibility issues because it's the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, we see that. Jason and I are on the same side saying... That's kind of a detriment. I don't really like that. I don't like being locked in. But if you're in the Apple ecosystem, it that's matter. actually a good thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, th there are also philosophical issues here. I mean, uh, Apple sells products. They don't sell yeah. your data. I mean, that's, and so that makes people feel uh, better. Some people feel better about using Apple products. Like I'm buying this iPhone. I'm not, uh, I'm not buying a cheaper Android phone and then handing over all of my data in order to pay for the rest of the product. There's also, um, there's a lot more customizations that you can do in Android. There's everything, like a lot is locked in in Apple and a lot of people like that. They don't want all those choices. They want things to just be done for them. And Apple, and there are a lot of people that use iPhones that don't believe that, but Apple uh, still wants them to believe that. Yeah. I feel like this could devolve really quickly into an Apple Android war, which is interesting because you'd be on opposite sides, but <laughs> We've done but, a lot of that already. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> it's been hold part of the challenge, that. actually. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the fun part. Yeah. That's, that's the tease of what you might get towards the end of the series. But let's start with you, because you had to switch from, uh, once again, once again, from Android to iOS. And, yeah. and you were going to give us some practical tips and some procedures that people should follow if they're thinking about taking that plunge. Well, thankfully, nowadays, it's really easy to port your data and your information from one platform to the other. Say you've been on Android for years or you've been on Android for a couple of years and you decided, you know what, I want to switch. I want to go to iOS. This thought can seem kind of daunting of, I've lived my life on this device for a couple of years. I want all that information on iOS, but they're two completely different platforms. And thankfully, Apple, the first app that they ever created for the Android platform was an app to get you to switch. Uh, and it's called uh, Move to iOS app. I actually have, <laughs> as a demonstration here, I have a bunch of notifications, but I have the OnePlus 5T. You can see down there the, the little logo. It's a Move to iOS app. And basically what this does when you have have an iPhone as I do. I have the iPhone uh, 6 Plus here. This is Jerry's iPhone, which, by the way, suffers from the screen disease. So oh, this could Megan, be a little challenging. Megan, what is the screen disease? Uh, I've never heard of this. It's also known as the touch disease, and it's an iPhone 6 Plus problem Ugh, that Apple so will be annoying. happy to fix for you as long as you're <laughs> willing to pay more money to them. But yeah, just the phone uh, just stops working. And it's they say Apple says it happens from dropping it a lot. Um, because I think that's something they could say to people and no one can say like, oh, no, no, I've never dropped my phone. Like, that's not key for, I mean, no one can say that and be honest about it, I think. I, right. I think you're just touching it wrong. I think that's yeah, that's yeah. Apparently so. And every time that I turn it on from from a black screen, I'm I'm like crossing my fingers. It's like twenty for twenty percent chance that it's actually oh. going to work. And if it's not working, I have to like do this crazy like bend at the corners thing. And Jerry showed me that that little secret. Eventually, I can get it. <laughs> also, but, it's not actually a disease. I mean, it's not no. like the flu that you had last week. We can't okay, catch it's not going to give me vertigo. Get, if you get your okay. iPhones together, does, does no, it, no, 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 it's no. not. It's not communicable. Yes, the five T isn't suddenly going to. Uh, be 
infected just sitting this close to it. In fact, they're going to be sharing data, so this could get really scary. So, okay, so I've got the uh, the OnePlus 5T here with the Move to iOS app. Uh, on the iPhone 6 Plus, I basically all I've done is like select my language and get right, to the manual right. uh, setup portion. And hey, what do you know? The screen isn't uh, afflicted quite yet. I'll go ahead and connect to the guest account. It's okay if you know the password because yeah, if you are a guest folk, here. It's his brick guest. You yeah. can come by the, the brick house. We have it on the walls. So that way I'm connected to a wireless network of some sort on the iPhone 6 Plus. It's going to take a, a few minutes to activate that. Over here on the 5T, I can hit OK and agree to all this stuff. I should probably read it first, Yeah, read right? it. No, okay. no, just, just continue. Can we, accept, accept. Can you give no, me 25 minutes uh, <laughs> or, or longer? It's basically da 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 first child, da 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 <laughs> yeah, Okay, all right, agree. First okay. child, I'm in. Uh, okay, so find your code. So what over here, essentially what you need to do on the 6 uh, the six Plus is get to the point to where you're moving data. Right now it's, you know, like, do you want to set up your touch ID? I'm going to do that later. Um, don't use, there might be a few other things. Uh, let's see here. The same password as on my luggage. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's amazing. That's uh, my password. Use anyway. Hey, Apple's pretty smart, right? Like I did that and they're like, Hey, this is a really easy password. Are you sure you want to do that? Uh, and I do. Okay. And eventually I'm going to get over here to the apps and data portion. That's what you see here. Move data from Android. They've got it all built into the now, OS, now which you makes said it really nice. It's really easy to move data. It is. Apps, not so much. There's not always a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and using this process, you're going to get some things and you're not going to get other things, which we'll talk about here in a second. Let's first of all, fire this up, move from Android, go ahead and continue. I'm going to get a, a six digit code on here. And this is basically on the 5T asking for my code. So I'll go ahead and enter that in 889301. And now it's going to do a direct, a Wi Fi direct connection between the, five, the, the OnePlus 5T and the iPhone 6 Plus. Right. So this is no longer going through our access point. These are connected directly. Yeah, they're connected directly. If I was to take a look at the uh, Wi Fi, you can see yeah. iOS, it's connected directly to it. Um, and so now on my 5T, I, you know, this is a pretty empty 5T. This isn't my daily driver. Right, Otherwise, right. I'd have lots more information here. But you can see it recognizes the Google account on my device that I was signed into. It recognizes that I have 1.8 gigs of camera content. Uh, media, photos, videos, that sort of stuff. Uh, it can also, I mean, it can transfer basically your, your SMS data over. It can transfer, what else am I missing? Text messages, Chromebook but, but marks. Wait, how, does, how does that work? Because iMessage is way different than any other app. It's not going to just come straight over. That's And that's a really great question as far as how it handles iMessage content. I mean, I think it's just taking straight up SMS okay. content over. And I don't know how it handles iMessage like messaging that's outside of SMS. I'm not really quite sure it's what it not, does. There. I mean, well, Android can't handle um, yeah. iMessage. Yeah. So anything that you, anyway, I'll, I'll get into that in my part okay. because there's fun. So when you switched from Android to iOS, did your SMS messages come over to the iPhone? Well, I mean, I'll be completely honest. I didn't do it this way. Mm. I set it up straight up because I've, I'm just yeah. so used to doing I'm that the same now. Way. I, I don't, I don't want all I like the to junk fresh. coming over. I want a fresh install. Yeah. So I didn't actually go through this process initially. And now I kind of wish that I had, mm -hmm. because I would have loved to have seen how much of that information came over. But yeah, I mean, it, technically it should be bringing over all of your SMS content from that specific device, you know, so I'm going to get everything in, in, that exists in, in time, anything that's been loaded onto that device since you've had it and used it. So I'm going to go ahead on the 5T and hit next. And now it's doing the transfer. It's essentially taking stuff that's over here on the 5T and moving it over to iOS. You're not going to get apps necessarily yeah. with, an, with exception, which I'll talk about in a second. You're now, not going to get if, music, if, passwords. If the app sort of does exist on both platforms and it's a free app, it yeah. should just load up. Exactly. It does give you that pop up. Okay. And what we'll see here when this when this completes is that you know I've got a bunch of Google apps over here mm -hmm. so it's like do you want to transfer your apps over and what do you know like actually it's a pretty solid choice for Google is that all of my Google apps right. end up appearing over here and it takes a little bit of time that's one thing to kind of keep in mind is because this is a direct connection and then it has to install the apps and everything this isn't something that happens in like two seconds you got to wait the time but now, uh, we've but got, it's relatively painless we've, we've got a comment from the, uh, the chat room from Scooter X making a very good point which is his SMSs are actually important to him. Now, he, the threads that he has maintained over the years are right. important to him. 
which is that's why I don't use SMS. I always use a like an app like Hangouts or WhatsApp because, because then it's portable. It's portable. That will yeah. go. It doesn't doesn't really matter what platform I'm using or you know desktop, laptop, phone. Uh, are, are you the same way or you're, you're no? You're an iMessage devotee. Well, I am. Um, you can't. I can't use iMessage with Android friends. No, no. So I mean, I would prefer certainly prefer to use WhatsApp or Telegram or any of the better tools, but I can't get my friends on them. Yeah, so they're on right. iMessage, and that is uh, that is that, that is definitely an issue. And Facebook Messenger. Lots of my friends are on Facebook Messenger, but I'm trying to no. stay away from Facebook. Yeah. So yeah. that well, is the, the second hard. you install Facebook Messenger on your phone, you just eat up 20% of your battery. Just go ahead and just take that chunk out because it's horribly, horribly written. Mm -hmm. But you know, Jason, for you, what's are you an SMS person or do you use a third party? I use everything. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just such a broken world messaging on Android. And just in general, there's so many messaging options. Yeah. Everybody sides with a different one. You know, I've got friends who live in Australia and uh, Peru and they prefer WhatsApp. So I use yeah. WhatsApp for them. Uh, All about Android crew. We use Allo. Uh, my wife, you know, we use uh, Hangouts and some SMS. It's yeah. just all over the place. And for whatever reason, I end up doing the mental gymnastics to I, I, actually I jump into the thing that's yeah. right for the person that I'm contacting. I wish it was better than that, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. we were using way. Slack, Jason and yeah. I, and I realized yeah. it was just the two of us. And yeah. it's like just where the, the rest of Twit uses HipChat, Leo uses HipChat. And so we have, I was just like, why are we doing this? Let's, yeah. let's just use HipChat. Uh, yeah, on my phone right now, I've got WhatsApp, Telegram, Hangouts, the standard SMS. Yeah. Uh, then I've got the um, uh, HipChat, Yammer, Slack, and then a special uh, chat thing for uh, for my, my work group. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, no, <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that is incredibly annoying. And, and you know, what bothers me is, especially with Hangouts, Hangouts could have been fantastic, but then they started denigrating it and they started not doing the updates. To yeah, it got really uh, confusing yeah. too to know what it's actually for. And if you're a Google Voice user, then you're still <laughs> using Hangouts. Otherwise, you're not. And so I still use it. And I think, wait, hold on. I think I still confusing. can go to voice.google.com. I think that that does still bring up. Are what, you Project Fi? Uh, no, but I, I was one of the original. Uh, Google Voice, yeah. Well, you should. Google Voice is still maintained. I mean, it's still totally updated. You can see it's got a kind of a, a material design. But at one point, it. they were bringing this together with Hangouts, and then they stopped. Yeah, and they kind and of they reversed. Kind of came back. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such a confusing mess. And you know, the the most depressing part of it is at this point, I have no faith. No actual faith that it's ever going to get solved. So I've just kind of succumbed to it and just yeah. been like, all right, I live in a million different messaging apps <laughs> now. I guess that's how it has to be. I wish it wasn't, but it is. My mom has changed the icons on her tablet. So my face is the icon for Hangouts. Because she knows <laughs> that's how I contact Robert. Hey, that works. And that iMessage works. has the the uh, icon for my sister's face, and that's, yeah. she knows that's how she contacts her. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, I guess we all deal. So you can see it's still transferring. It says it 9%. Yeah. I mean, I had 1.5 gigs, and this is actually a little pro tip that I might share with you. If you have been on Android, chances are you've been using Google Photos. Right. And if you're using Google Photos, it offloads all of your photos and videos to the cloud for you pretty much automatically. And depending on the device, if you're on a Pixel, you know, it's full full res, all that kind of stuff. So it already resides in the cloud. So before you do this, if you're really gonna go through this process, you might save yourself a lot of time by just going into Google Photos and telling it to delete things that are no longer need to be on your device prior to this. Because 1.5 gigs, and it's taking this long, imagine if like half of your, your 32 gigs of storage right. is all media. Does it really need to exist on your camera roll on a brand new phone? No, it's already in the cloud. You can get to it easily through the Photos app, which will automatically install, by the way, once we get into the home and I log into accounts and stuff. So um, you might do your save yourself some time and just go in there, blow out that media on the, the Android device before you do this, and it'll happen a little quicker. Uh, let me ask you this of both of you. So I have sold my digital collection soul to Google Photos. Everything ends up in Google Photos. And I've chosen the unlimited, which means I'm going to lose a little bit of res resolution. It's not uploading it on Mac. I know. It, it's what, like, are, you gonna, are you going to take that random photo and make Precisely. a, a wall-sized poster print of it? No, you you're never going to do that. And, and I used to. I used to actually hook up to the phone and make a copy of the full resolution version and put it on my net. I don't even do that anymore. No. Because it's the searchability. I mean, the yeah. fact that oh, I can yeah. type in dog and it will give me the... 12,000 pictures I have of dogs in my collection. That's amazing for me. And if it yeah. was sitting on my NAS, there's no way I'm going to go through that. So it's useless. 
Are you the same way? Have you have you sold to cloud photo storage? Well, I think that you should have more than one option. If you only have yeah. one, then it's not technically a backup. It's, you know, if you're just putting everything yeah. in Google yeah, Photos, really you point. don't have a backup. So I have everything in Google Photos. I have everything also in iCloud. Um, and I have the personal cloud, the Apollo cloud, which is a four terabyte um you know, I guess it's like a NAS that I just reviewed on the screensavers that I'm using right now too. I probably also have things on Smug Mug and you know different places. So e everywhere, um, yeah, the more backups, the better. Yeah. I, and I used to be like that. I had um, I had Google Photos, then I also had the the Samsung Cloud, and mm -hmm. I had the Amazon uh, Photo Cloud, oh, and I, I had Dropbox too. and OneDrive. Yep. And then I realized, wow, every time I take a picture, I'm uploading like a gigabyte worth of stuff because I'm going to five different yeah. providers. Plus you're paying at this point. And you're for paying a lot at this point. Yeah. 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 So like right now, even though I, 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 what a terabyte, I think I have a terabyte on the Amazon cloud because I'm a prime member. I don't think I have any photos in there past what? Three years ago. Well, mm -hmm. you can have unlimited photos if you have prime and same, same thing. It's, I don't even, I don't think it's as high quality as yeah. the unlimited in Google, but prime allows you to upload as many photos as you want. Mm -hmm. And I should take advantage of that, but I don't just because Google Photos has become so comfortable. I, I guess, you know yeah. what? That's the thing. I just gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I like the fact that at any point, I can take a picture with my phone, jump over to my desktop, type photos.google.com. It's already there. I love that. That is mm -hmm. a great a convenience for me. So yeah, yeah the, the storage doesn't really matter that much anymore. So we we don't have to wait all day for this. It's still at 15%. I'll, I'll be honest. I, when I ran this yesterday with the same exact configuration, it took me about, I don't know, seven minutes. So I'm surprised it's still kind of going. I don't know why it was faster yesterday than Maybe it is today. Maybe the guest network is not that fast. Uh, well, it's, but it, it's yeah, it should be, it should be okay. Wi-Fi direct. So that oh. shouldn't matter. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But anyways, all you're really missing here at this point, maybe it'll snap into place uh, while I'm talking about it, is once you get everything moved over to iOS and you finally reach your home screen, it's going to suddenly give you a pop-up that says, log into your Google account. So it was able to sync over the Google accounts that I was logged into on my Android device, but you still have to re-authenticate. So you right, have to put in your password right. to say, yes, this is actually me, two-factor, if that's on, you have to do that. And then once you do that, all of your other stuff, your emails, you know, the, cl the calendar information, contacts, all that stuff suddenly gets synced to your device. It's actually a really... A uh, really easy, pretty straightforward thing. And then, as we were talking about just a few minutes ago, suddenly on your home screen, you'll see all of those free apps appear. You'll actually right. get a prompt that says, do you want to add uh, the Android device apps for the App Store? And it will add those if they are free apps. It'll automatically recognize what you had on the Android device, what the equivalent app is on iOS, and just start installing it. So it's, I, I was actually pretty impressed pretty with slick. this whole process. Yeah. From coming to, from one platform to the other, uh, you know, they've made it relatively easy and going that step further of installing apps is nice because who, who loves going into the app store and remembering all the apps they need to reinstall? Still need to sign into things, but that's one step closer. Although I, I'd have to say, uh, would you advocate people going into their, their Google Play Store and deleting the apps that they might have installed six or seven years ago that they no longer use? I, I went into my list of applications Oh my goodness! There's there's over oh. 400 apps. Oh man, I wish I only had 400 apps in there. there. <laughs> 350 of them are there. I would never install them again. They were like, oh, I looked at this for five minutes and I deleted right. it, but it's still in that they list. They were new in 2011, right. yeah. <laughs> and they've never been updated since. Like, why would I ever go back to it? Yeah, I mean, th those apps aren't coming over. Okay, so it's pretty much that, anything you had on installed. The phone. Got it. Yeah, if I if I had, which I do, you know, the whole Google suite of apps installed on the Android device, it's going to recognize those, match those over, and do it. Right, so, right. yeah. Well, we're going to get over to Megan in a bit because she's going to show us the other side. This is the peanut butter and the chocolate, or are you the chocolate and the peanut butter? Peanut I, butter I, I am the time. chocolate. You are. The, she is the chocolate. That's period. <laughs> end, end of story. Well, we'll be, she'll be showing us how you go from iOS to Android and how she's absolutely loved that process. And she wished she could stay in Android world forever. At least for another two weeks. She, she can't even say that with no. a straight no, no, no. <laughs> but before we get there, let's go ahead and take a moment to thank a sponsor of this episode of Know How. Now, I know that you are a creative professional. I know that this is what you love. You love to make things. You love to show people things. You love it when your work gets displayed prominently. I mean, that's the whole idea of the new economy, the new creation gig. But the question is, are you using the right tools? Are you making sure that your content, that what you've created, that what you've made is being shown off in the right way? 
Because if you're not using WordPress, then the answer for that is no. Uh, we are so happy to have WordPress as a sponsor because we use them every day. And let me tell you, whether you're looking to create a, a personal blog, a business site, or both, creating your website on WordPress.com helps others find you, remember you, and connect with you. Uh, you don't need experience. You do need your content. You do need to make sure that you are passionate about what it is that you want to show off, but you don't have to hire someone. WordPress.com guides you through the entire process from start to finish. They take care of the technical side, so it's easy to get your site up and running. They've got hundreds of beautiful designs to choose from. That means you get built-in search engine optimization and social sharing. And their business plan lets you access hundreds of plugins and themes. Their customer support team is made up of WordPress experts who are eager to help you get the most from your site. They're available to help 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and weekends too. Now, their plans, reasonably, just start at $4 a month. Now, come see why 29% of all websites, no, folks, that's not a typo, 29% of all websites run on WordPress. Get started today with 15% off any new plan purchase. Just go to WordPress.com slash know-how to create your website and find the plan that's right for you. Again, that's WordPress.com slash know-how for 15% off your brand new website. And we thank WordPress for their support of know-how. Well, Megan, we're going to get to you in just a bit, but if you want to hold up your... Yeah, you, you're, you're double dutying it with, with watches today. I really am. I'm starting Stylish. a fashion trend here. This is the Sophia, um, LG Sophia, and this is the Hey S332. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. It's the We Loop Hey 3S. The We Loop Hey 3S. And we're worn together. You create a fashion statement, uh, forward thinking. I uh, <laughs> uh, Basically, you're just saying... I don't care about style at all. <laughs> okay. No, I actually have the same watch right here. This is the Hey 3S, and I got this one from CES over at Showstoppers. I, I dropped by, and, uh, well, they wanted me to try it for a couple of weeks just to think, just to, to you know, find out how it is that I like their style of smartwatch. Uh, I made a little segment a while back, and uh, after two weeks of first showing this off on Know How, this is my review of the WeLoop Hey 3S. Are you looking for the most advanced smartwatch on the market? Something with more features than a Samsung Gear S3? More style than an Apple Watch? Apps for days? Well, if so, then the WeLoop Hey 3S is not the watch for you. This is not the unlimited blade works of wrist candy. This is not an Apple Watch killer. This will not replace your phone. But what it can do is to be an incredibly competent health monitoring device in a watch package with the right price and a battery life that may shock you. The Hey 3S is a multi-sport smartwatch with a 1.28-inch touchscreen under Corning G3 glass. It's light, and when I say light, I mean really light. A Samsung Gear S3 is 60 grams. An Apple Watch can be up to 125 grams, but the Hey 3S tops out at 38 grams. It uses low-power Bluetooth 4.2 to connect to your iOS or Android-compatible phone and is equipped with the full set of sensors that you would expect from a health monitoring device. GPS and GLONASS positioning, an optical heart rate sensor, compass, gyroscope, three-axis accelerometer, and nine-axis IMU. All of that means that it can track steps, cycles, distance, speed, heart rate, and sleep patterns. It's also IP67 rated so that you can use it while showering, swimming, snorkeling, and diving down to 30 meters. Beyond the multi-sport features, the Hey 3S gives you a basic smartwatch functionality. Linked to your phone, you can choose to receive notifications from most of your apps, and data is synced periodically, meaning that you don't have to have your phone with you at all times. There's a decent selection of watch faces, though the watch can only hold one alternate face at a time, and syncing over BLE is a slow process. The 1.28-inch touchscreen is responsive, but then again, there's not much to the UI. A few rudimentary icons let you access the various sensors of the watch, set up lap times, timers, and the like, but it's not exactly overwhelming, and it's definitely not beautiful. But then again, it's not supposed to be. You see, the Hey 3S isn't a small phone on your wrist. It really is a watch that just happens to have some smartwatch features. For that downgrade of smartwatch functionality, you get three things. First, price. At $150, the Hey 3S is half to a third of what you would pay for a premium Apple or Android watch. Second, size and reliability. Being so low-powered, WeLoop was able to make the Hey 3S ultra-light 
and durable. And third, battery. You might be able to squeeze two days out of an Apple Watch, maybe five to six days out of a Samsung Gear S3, but the 270 milliamp hour battery in the Hey 3S will last you a month. No, that's not a typo, a full month. In fact, I haven't charged this review unit since it was first seen on our CES episode of New Screensavers on January 13th. That was three weeks ago, and since then I've traveled around the world and walked a few miles through the halls and corridors of Rome. Even then, the watch still has more than 50% battery power remaining. It surprises me to say this, but I actually like the Wii Pay 3S, and I'll probably end up wearing this thing. Now, if you already have an Apple Watch or an Android Watch, this is definitely a step back in terms of functionality, but that's the point. It gives you what you need in a smartwatch with nothing that you don't. Now, it's definitely not a gadgeteer's watch, so if you're looking for a toy, something to fidget with, you may want to stick with what you already have. But if you're like me and you don't normally wear a watch, or if you're looking for something that doesn't cost hundreds upon hundreds of dollars, something that's small, something that's light, and something that has an ungodly battery, then maybe the WeLoop Hey 3S is the way to get you into wearing a smartwatch. I'm Father Robert Balliser, the Digital Jesuit, reporting for Twit TV. Now, I fully, I fully understand that if you already have a smartwatch, that you, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble getting used to this because it, it, is a, it is a move down. I mean, it doesn't have the slick UI of an Apple Watch. It doesn't have all the features of, uh, you know, like a gear. Simil well, okay. yeah, it's it's yeah, pretty close. Pretty it's supposed to look like an Apple Watch. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it, it, the display is definitely, if you go to his, his shot, it, the display is definitely something that's, that's uh, different, different. If you go to, there we go. Nope. Uh, there, there you go. Oh, there go. Uh, because it is standard TFT. So it's not an OLED. It's not vibrant. But the difference is if you take this out into the direct sunlight, it's mm. easier to read. That's that's the old trans-reflective TFT. Uh, so, you know, yeah, there's there's definitely trade-offs. So you, you can tell that it's, it's components that use less power. It's components that are maybe a little less high performance. But again, that one-month battery life, that is killer. Yeah. Because that's what got me to stop wearing a um, an Android watch because mm -hmm. I was tired of having to charge the thing every night. And then every once in a while, I would put it on the charger wrong or it moved or I just forgot to charge it. And then I'd, I'd go without a watch for the day. Yeah. And sometimes uh, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't last like even two or three hours. Yeah. It depends me. on what it's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it does use GPS and it does use that for metrics, so mm -hmm. it will measure distance run, ran, swam, whatever it's going to mm -hmm. be. Uh, but there's no there's not no GPS app on this. It's mm -hmm. not like the Gear S3 that actually has a GPS app you can use by itself. Right. Uh, you won't be answering calls on this. It gets notifications, but there's no two way communication. So it's it's a very specific type of user who's going to get this. Someone who wants a watch that's light because it's half the weight yeah. of either of your watches. It's, you know, something with a crazy long battery life that's between half to a third of the cost and is willing to take that uh, limited functionality because they don't really want that much on the wrist. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I like it. I think it's a little bit too expensive still. I, I am actually with you. If, there, if I was going to throw a con in there, because I think it's actually, I like the concept. It's a watch that's smart, not a smart watch. Um, I would say if you could get that to hundred dollars, then that's mm -hmm. like that's the perfect price point. One hundred and fifty still kind of feels like, well, I mean, do I want to pay a hundred dollars more and maybe get a used Android watch? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. I could, don't know if you do. <laughs> you could pay uh, you could pay a hundred dollars more and get a used Apple Watch. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's, you got to play with the price points a tiny bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let's not talk about price points right now because we got to get the other side of the switch. Oh, uh, yes. Megan, you very happily switched over to Android. And can you show us how? <laughs> I, I did it. I did do it happily and I did it uh, haphazardly and quickly. And this is the <laughs> right way. So first of all, if you're planning like me to switch back, the first thing you want to do is back up your phone either to iCloud or to iTunes, and you can do that on a Windows computer um, on iTunes, or you can do it on a, an Apple computer. Uh, do you have a preference there? Do you like the local copy, or are you fine with just putting it up in the cloud? Um, well, uh, the local cop the the cloud is expensive, um, yeah, that's and right. yeah. uh, the iCloud is expensive, and it's clunky, and um, so I would prefer doing it if I have space on a computer. I prefer doing it that way. Um, but yeah, so then you first do that. Uh, if you were never planning to go back to iOS, if you have washed your hands of Apple, <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't need to do that. Um, and I'll show you what, what you can do. First of all, you need Wi-Fi. It's best to do this on Wi-Fi. You're going to be transferring a lot of stuff. So you're going to want a speedy Wi-Fi connection. Don't do it on cellular. And you're going to need a few hours. And you're going to need a charger and a place to, to back up. So don't do this on a camping trip um, or anything like that. I don't know why you would. The first thing you're going to do is download Google Drive onto your iPhone, the Google Drive app. If you don't already have it, if you already have it, you're going to want to update it uh, to make sure you have the latest version. So you download Google Drive and then you sign into your personal account. If you're going to switch to Android and you don't already have a Google account, you're going to get yourself one. You need one. You can't do it without one. Yeah, and it's, um, it's free. So why wouldn't you just grab one? Yeah. I mean, if you're, you're making the switch, get yourself uh, an account if you don't already have one, then sign in to your personal account on the iPhone. Um, and then uh, you, when I tried to do this, we have our like Megan at twit.tv, which is a Google for right. work account. It didn't let me back up. Um, onto Google Drive on that for some reason. I guess we, I don't know if it's an individual thing that we have set, um, but so I had to use my personal Google account. So just to make sure you have a personal, personal Google account, if you just have one for work, it might not work to back up. Um, so then you back up your content onto Google Drive. That includes your contacts, your calendar, your photos. That's Google Photos as we talked about, your videos. Um, this could take up to three hours. I started this last night. I had like 20,000 items. If you take a look now, um, still I still going. have 7,325 oh, wow. items left. Seriously? Wow, that's, that's crazy. Kind of I have pro I have contact like I've had Gmail for you know I don't know fifteen years so that's like fifteen years but of contact. Let's not be that that honest. takes it's it's the it's the photos and the videos. Yes. that are going to really the most yeah. yeah. So I mean it's just it's a lot of stuff and it's going to take a long time. You're you're this is why you're going to want to use a charger because it's going to have to remain uh, on the screen. It's not going to just do it in the background or anything like that. Like Google Photos does. So it's wait, gonna... while this is happening, you can't do anything else with the phone. No, you yeah, yeah, you can't. You can't close um, the app. That's... It'll stop. Hmm. Okay. Um, so you do that and um, now we'll just sit here and wait for the next 3 hours that it takes. I, I'm actually down with that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're not going to do that. Um, don't close the apps. Don't turn off your screen. Um, then you, let's say that, let's say we finished. Oh, I didn't show you how to do the backup because I was already backing up. Let's stop. Um, yes, I want to stop. Stopping backup will not remove content that has already been up uploaded. Thank you. Um, so let me show you uh, how I did this. Let's go close. Um, so you go to your drive and Google Drive and then you go to the settings button and then you go back up. And like I said, when I use my Megan at twit.tv, this feature wasn't available. So you say back up contacts. Maybe you don't want to back up your contacts. Maybe you're um, going into the witness protection program and you don't want to, you want to, you know, all your contacts gone. You don't have to do that. You don't have to switch to Google Calendar and then start back up. So that's that's what it uh, that's what it does. Okay. Ne next, next, um, we've already talked about photos. Everybody knows that high quality is fine, like we talked about before. Um, uh, if you're going to want the best quality, then you're going to consider paying. Um, so you can do that. Uh, the key to success. Which, which I always fail to do. I failed to do it last year and I failed to do it this year is deregistering oh, iMessage. Oh gosh, yes. So uh, that's what we were talking yeah, about. That's there the tricky are one. horror stories mm -hmm. of, of people just suddenly all their messages are in the ether. Yeah, so what happens if you don't, like we talked about before, SMS is not iMessage. Those are two different things. That's part of the Wald's Garden iMessage. And if you, you know, if you have a lot of people, all their friends are on iPhones. All, everyone in my book club, club is on iPhones. And when one of us switches, it's haywire because all of our group messages get all messed up. And Wait, what color does it turn when you start getting... Your messages turn green. Oh, so it's not the, that's, like... So that's the color of shame, basically. Yeah. So, so if you, yeah, if you're texting a friend and all of a sudden the message turn green, turns green, you know. So what happens is if you don't deregister iMessage, everyone that you're messaging doesn't know. And so they'll send a text message. Yes, pick me up at eight. Yep, my house is on fire. Please come and <laughs> save me right now. And if they you just... You can win a million dollars if you get back to me right now. <laughs> yes. In the next exactly. 20 seconds. <laughs> right. So they'll do that and then they'll put their phone down and you never get that message. Right. And if uh -huh. they look at their phone, sometimes it'll say, didn't go through, send his text message and they press that button, but sometimes they won't do that. And if you're in a group message, they have no idea you're gone. Right. You're just persona non grata. They're, they're just wondering why you're so quiet all of yeah. a sudden. Right. Why are you being a jerk? And yeah. any, you know, you'll, you'll sometimes see people and, you know, say like, oh, I switched to Android and the text messages don't work. I hate Android. And it's like, that is not Android. That's all Apple's fault. They're the ones keeping you inside. But, and, but it's amazing how many people I know 
who switched back just for iMessages mm -hmm. because they were they they hated the fact that mm -hmm. their their message would show up in green and they they couldn't handle that anymore. I mean, it's like yeah, I like the phone, I like the service, but yeah, uh, the people I communicate with. Uh, they they laugh at me every time mm -hmm. because they know I'm not on an iPhone. I'm like, well, that's kind of shallow, but okay, I, I get yeah. that. That's cool. It happens with kids too. Yeah. Like I know, like I have some of my uh, kids' friends who are on Android, and it's just like, oh, you know, and they, it's it's fine. It's the same. <laughs> it's I feel like we need to teach our kids grit and how to use Android. Do you, that's do you think <laughs> Apple, would Apple ever make an iMessage app for Android? I doubt Probably it. Probably not. Right. No, no way. No. Yeah, it, you know, I, I feel like that's one of those hell freezes over sort of yeah. moments. It, it possibly could happen. Apple might be able to justify it at some point why that needs to happen. So. But it really feels like pigs flying. Well, the, and the other happens. side of that is, is there anyone who isn't switching from iOS who would decide to use the iMessage app on Android? Wait a minute, say that again. Well, is there anyone who's not switching from iOS? So uh -huh. they're yeah. not already using iMessage, would choose... To start on Android? on Android? Yeah. I think so. You think so? I, I think so. Wouldn't you use it with your iPhone friends or, you know, like- I would certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of iPhone users out there and they're all using iMessage. And if you're on Android, you are, you are missing out on a certain level of conversation between people you probably know. You're just outside of that conversation um, group. And so I, I think if there was an iMessage alternative or option for Android, I think a lot of people would probably try it at, at the very least, especially because there's a lot of myth and, and uh, you know, around the greatness of, of iMessage, whether it deserves that or not. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people have said that over the years. And on Android, we all know how messed up messaging is. So I think we'd be willing to try anything. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I would uh, install it just so I could send poop emojis to my iPhone friends. You mean animo <gasps> animated poop emojis? I haven't even done animojis yet. What is wrong with me? I've got two <laughs> weeks left to do animojis. That's my goal for the next two weeks is to do animojis. Literally the very first thing I did was it, to no, do yes, the state it Star was. Wars AR stickers. Yes. All right. I um, promise I will do that. Anyways. <laughs> okay. So here we are now in my beautiful Pixel 2 XL XL2, 2XL. And uh, then I can copy my data from another Android or an iPhone device or the cloud or start up as new. So I'm going to copy my data and then I uh, can use my old phone. You need your old phone. I hear I have turn it on, keep it unlocked. And then after I've deregistered iMessage, of course, and then find your old phone's cable. Use the cable that fits your old phone. This usually is used for charging. No cable? I got no cable. Copy data another way. Yeah, you'll get the most contact, including SMS messages, if you use a cable. So this is how I could get all of my um, SMS messages, which is different than my iMessages if I use a cable. If the cable in the box doesn't fit, try using your old cable, blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I don't have a cable. I really don't have a cable. It so. really wants a cable. <laughs> um, so I can back up from the cloud. I can back up from an, another Android di device or an iPhone device. I think it, I'm just going to back up from the cloud because I've already backed up everything, even though it says 6,640. Uh, I'm going to back up from the cloud and this says just a second, checking info. Now, oh, Megan, I, I'd like to point something out really quickly. Um, the last time we were all together, Jason actually registered for credit monitoring while we were on the episode. Mm -hmm. And Alex, if you, if you go to his over the shoulder shot, uh, he has just discovered the animojis. <laughs> Um, Hi, everybody. So, Megan, you, uh, you have brought someone else into the fold. Uh, mm. You haven't sent one yet. Who are you going to send it to? <laughs> Do I have to send it? No, you I don't think, have to send it. You can happy just save the way it. it is. Hello, Megan. I guess uh, you're going to get a poop emoji coming to you very soon, but you won't get it because you're on Android. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You, you can save it as a video. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, that's fun. I'm going to do that more. <laughs> you got two weeks. You got two right, weeks. I got two weeks. Oh, to live I'm it up. sorry, Megan. Please okay, continue. don't show my screen because I'm entering oh, okay. my password now for my Gmail account. Um, One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Same password. Mm -hmm. as well. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That old saw. I know, right? Um, okay, now here is a big question. Um, here's the problem that I ran into last time. Two-step verification. This is an extra step that shows you are actually, you are really trying to sign in. Open yes uh, on we're, the... We are going into Jason territory <laughs> with really this. We really are. <laughs> because uh, I have my two-step verification on this phone here. So... Uh -huh. So what, what, now what? I need... I'm well, you, for, you probably have a more options click. Uh, more, uh, oh, oh, probably it will send a text message, right? 
Okay. I so, mean, yeah, options. you've got a multiple options. For okay. Two so steps. I can so tap yes you... on your phone or tablet. Uh, it's not giving me because I'm not logged in because I erased everything here. Right. Get a verification code from the Google Authenticator app. I don't have that. Um, I can get a verification with automatic verification at my phone number. Which would be like an SS straight SMS. Right. Yeah. That's Where, probably, that's what, that's you probably what you want because that'll come over. It should come over anyways. Let's try it. Let's try it and see. Jason, shades of, wow, of like two years ago. Hey, you know what? <laughs> with with extreme security comes... Extreme responsibility, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Potent, extreme potential for disaster. <laughs> okay, use your device to sign in. Do you want to receive sign-in prompts on this device? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's my favorite part. That I is really that. nice. That's, yeah. that's one of my favorite things, that's too. What, uh, for security, it's just awesome. So it's checking my info. I'm starting to sweat a little bit, friends. I think it'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're good. I think you're all right. You're okay. It says uh, no. Oh, security alert. Okay. There we I'm getting go. Getting it See? in my email. Yeah, I think it's already let you in, hasn't, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Okay, yeah. no backups found. Great. Um, just a second. No, you're good. Unlock. Oh, I'm good. I'm in. Yeah. <sighs> so now I will put my fingerprint in. Um, okay, next. And then I'll set a pin. Boop, 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 boop. Very secret pin. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. You have to make that noise along with that pin. And then, yeah, then basically, I think- yeah, You're good to go. I'm good to go. Now that- That was tense. That was, well, yeah, because whenever you get to the, the multi-factor authentication and yeah. you start thinking, did I just destroy the the, ve the vector from which I received <sighs> multi-factor authentication? I know. But I, it also doesn't seem secure. Away. <laughs> Why did it let me in? Oh, because you were still able to, to validate through the, the phone number. So uh, the, the SIM actually doesn't change the number. Okay. So you can still get it that way. Got it. Right. But you had you had wiped out the account. Right. 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 Okay. So now I'm teaching the assistant to recognize my voice saying, you know, okay. All the Google, basic setup. And all that. And then you're done. And then uh, you and can. You switch back in a month. <laughs> yes. You can <laughs> switch back. But to, to be fair, I really have loved using the Pixel phone. Like it is a really nice phone. And I love the Google Assistant. And I love being able to squeeze. What's the biggest thing you've missed? My Apple Watch. Uh, okay. Because I even have, I subscribe to Apple Music and there's a perfectly good Apple Music app on the Android phone that I use. Um, the, the Android's not keeping you out of that. It's my Apple Watch. It's part of me. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, yeah. biggest thing you've missed? I think just a general sense of, of, I don't know how to phrase this, curiosity. I feel like when I'm using iOS, I'm less connected to the OS itself. I'm more just using it as a straight utility. Like, yeah, I make calls, I surf the web, I check my Twitter, whatever. But when I'm using my Android device, like there's always this yeah. running curiosity, tweaking, keeping it, you know, like shifting things around. I, and I don't know if that's just because I'm so familiar with Android and that's just how I've always used Android. So it's hard for me to transport that over into the iOS realm or what. But I just kind of, to be honest, I just kind of get bored on iOS. Whereas with Android, like it, there's enough extra stuff there in some weird, tan, you know, tangible and intangible way that I feel like I it's it. more no. mine. Yeah. And you know, it, part of that has to be the fact that we know that this is temporary. We, I know that I'm just using the iPhone for the iPhone 10 for a few more weeks and then it goes back. So it's hard to get fully invested in it and. I, I enjoy having my own device, if that makes sense. Well, Megan, Jason, I've got a surprise guess. for you. If you reach under your seats, <laughs> you <laughs> permanently got an iPhone and you permanently got an Android phone. Congratulations. You got me a coffee. <laughs> oh, thank you, Padre. <laughs> Oh, um, I think I, I think Megan will be very happy when she switches back because she wants her emojis. And yeah. I want I'm I'm getting the HomePod tomorrow. And the HomePod, oh. but I can no, set no, it. You I mean can... Jason's getting a HomePod? <laughs> no, I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, and was... I can set it up with uh, this old iPhone or an iPad, and um, hopefully then uh, just reset it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we're bringing you back next week because this was the the switching part. This was just getting into the new operating system. But next week, you're actually going to show us some apps. You're going to show us a couple of tricks and a couple of things that maybe you've picked cool up along the way. Cool things, yeah, cool things we've things. learned. Now, the question for me is, uh, are, are you going to do this again next year? When we get to 2019, is it going to be... Yeah, and, we'll do it next year for two first, days. The first, <laughs> well, the first switch was four weeks. This was six weeks, so it's two months next year, right? No, it is not, <laughs> Padre.
That is a, that is an incorrect assumption. <laughs> we have definitely dug insides here. Uh, <laughs> Megan, Jason, I want to thank you very much for being on this panel for Know How. You know, this is, I like doing this every once in a while. We like our makery stuff, and we, we like building things. But every once in a while, it's it's really as simple as, hey, what happens if you want to switch your operating system? What happens if you want to use a different yeah. phone? And yeah, this it's is nice to see knowledge. the process, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there there are ways to to look this up online and to find the walkthrough process, but there are things that you learn uh, along the way, so it's good to know. I mean, it's called Twit Switch after all. It is. This yeah. is pretty integral integral to switching is how you bring your data over, so it's it's good information. Jason Howell, you're going to find him on all about Android as well as Tech News Weekly and on Know How. He's he's become part of the regular co-host regu uh, rotation, and of course Megan Maroney, you're going to find her on iOS Today with the Port as well as Tech News Weekly and Know How. It's, it's weird how we're kind of converging. Mm -hmm. And all three of us are also on triangulation. And triangulation, right? that's triangulation, right. We rotate on triangulation. Screen savers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can we're find us everywhere. Place. But uh, we also want to thank you and make sure that you have an easy way to get all this information. We're actually going to put all of this in the show notes. So you don't have to keep watching the episode over and over to pick up the tips and tricks. You're going to find our show notes at twit.tv slash kh. While you're there, why not subscribe? It's the best way to support the show and make sure that we can continue to geek out with you for years to come. You can choose an audio version, a video version, or a high-definition video version. Again, twit.tv slash kh. Uh, don't forget that you can also go to our Google Plus group. Just jump into Google Plus, look for know-how. There's a very short approval process, so I can keep out the spam accounts. But once you're in, you get access to almost 12,000 KEDAs. Those are our know-it-alls, people in every stage of their maker DIY journey. You can ask questions, you can answer questions, you can share your knowledge, or you can share videos and pics of your projects, and we'll try to put them here on know-how. Uh, also, you can find us in the other socials, specifically on Twitter. Jason, where they find you? Uh, at Jason Howell. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. Just look up my name. Yeah, there I am. And, and Megan, where are you? I am Megan Maroney on the Twitters and everywhere else. Wow, so you both used your name. For, it wasn't uh, always this way, Padre. Huh. Yeah, because I'm twitter.com slash Padre SJ. That's not actually my name, which is weird because I uh, the last time of CES, um, people call, kept calling me Padre. I'm pretty sure they didn't actually know my name was Robert. <laughs> but <laughs> but okay. you, you knew they were talking to you, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like, it's, so, it's hey, fine. It's all good. Everybody wins. And by the way, we have another member of the crew. We call him Sir Sunshine. You can find Sir Sunshine... <laughs> At twitter.com slash A N E L F. Excuse me, Padre. That's sunshine, not sunshine. Yeah. Sure, sunshine. <laughs> sunshine. I have a problem with that word. Let the sunshine. <laughs> Until next time, I am Father Robert Bellis here. I'm Megan Maroney. And I'm Sean Connery. And now that you know how, do something. Go switch it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Switch it up. <laughs>